trip uh did jake make you make sure you came equipped with a top 10 of course i have my top 10 here so, <laughs> excellent yes so we always let our guests go first why don't you lay out okay. uh, your top 10 movies of 1972 um like i said this is a year that i don't think is talked about for as great as it is and part of that is because it is the year of the godfather right and the godfather sort of sucks all energy out of that conversation you know whatsoever and i don't think the oscar lineup really quite showcases what is so great about this year number 10 uh, 1776 the musical adaptation i think it's a really great adaptation uh, number nine a documentary that more people need to see called black rodeo um that's really sort of a fascinating look at black rodeo at the time in i think it's new york city um but also a lot about like just the history of the black cowboy uh fascinating uh, number eight, The Heartbreak Kid, Elaine May, Neil Simon, nothing more needs to be said. And then my top seven could probably go in most any order, because I think they're all sort of masterpieces. But uh, number seven, I have The Godfather. Uh, number six, Solaris, the Tarkovsky. Number five, Cries and Whispers by Ingmar Bergman. Although that's one of those weird, like, 72 some places, 73 other places. Uh, number four, I have Cabaret one of the great movie musicals. Uh, number three, The Discreet Charm of the Bourgeoisie by Boudoir. Number two, a movie that would be fascinating with deliverance, and that is Aguirre, The Wrath of God, the Werner Herzog movie. They both came out the same year. Uh, and Sumi, number one, What's Up, Doc? Uh, no litigation necessary. Um, okay, so we actually have, we have some uh, crossover, but not a ton. I'm going to give one honorable mention just because my list goes to 11. Mm -hmm. It actually goes to 12, but my number one is Lone Wolf and Cove, Baby Carton, Hades. And I gave that for a different year because we covered it on its American release here on the podcast. But my one honorable mention is Silent Running, a cool but not amazing uh, sci-fi movie starring Bruce Stern, directed by Douglas Turnbull, uh, uh, Trumbull, about, uh, who is a special effects supervisor for most of his career, but directed two movies, one starring Christopher Walken and, and this one, about Bruce Stern going crazy on a space station. Uh, it's It's fun, but not... Uh, not in the league of these other movies. My number 10 is The Heartbreak Kid. I'll say a little more. Uh, so Elaine May, I just think, is is so great. Uh, mm -hmm. Her movies are so unheralded, but but they're so much fun. I haven't seen Ishtar, but I bet it's good and mm -hmm. um, and that its <laughs> reputation is unfair. Yes, and also, that's true. And what's important to say about The Heartbreak Kid is the re don't judge a movie by its remake. This mm -hmm. one's really funny. Uh, my number nine is Pete and Tilly. Uh, it's a Walter Matthau starring movie with um, Carol Burnett. They play a couple who they, they get married despite the fact that she knows he's a womanizer. Uh, they have a kid. The kid has cancer. And it's just about their life as a couple. It was directed by Martin Ritt. It's very good. It would be higher on the list if it weren't for one really overacty scene from Carol Burnett in the middle where she cries to Jesus about uh, her son dying. It's just a little cheesy, but very good. My number nine is Solaris. Uh, we've covered that on this podcast at great length. We did a whole episode about it. Okay, and then here we go. Lone Wolf and Cub came out this year, all, almost all of it. It's on my list a lot. My number seven is Lone Wolf and Cub, Baby Cart in Peril. That's not the last you'll hear of Lone Wolf and Cub on this list. My number, where am I at? Six is Sleuth, uh, directed by Joseph Mankiewicz and starring Laurence Olivier and Michael Caine. It's just the whole movie. It's Jake, it's one of these movies you love that all take place in mm -hmm. one location. Uh, it's just a battle of wits between these two. Michael Caine sort of followed it up with a movie called Death Trap, where he plays the Olivia role, Olivier role, and Christopher Reeve plays his role, which I'm really excited to watch. But yeah, Sleuth is really cool. My number five is Lone Wolf and Cub, Sword of Vengeance. My number four is What's Up, Doc? My number three is Lone Wolf and Cub, Baby Cart on the River Styx, which I think is the second best Lone Wolf and Cub movie after Baby Cart in Hades. But if you like anything Lone Wolf and Cub, which also just watch any Lone Wolf and Cub movie if you haven't seen it yet. If you like one of them, you will like all of them. It's basically John Wick in that, not in that it's like John Wick, although it's a little bit like John Wick, in that all the movies in the series are the same and they're all awesome. You won't get tired of them. <laughs> my number two is Deliverance and my number one, sue me, it's The Godfather. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, um, we I honestly probably should have gone first because my list is going to be dumb uh, compared to no, you it guys. Isn't. Yeah. Stop it. Never. <laughs> Stop it. Um, I only have enough for a top five and a couple of honorable mentions. So I just want to throw out a couple okay. of uh, couple honorable mentions first um, for uh, a couple of things that couldn't fit, 
fit into my top five. And then one movie that I didn't have a rating for on Letterboxd, just because I haven't seen it in a long time, but I remember liking it. The Poseidon Adventure came out this year, and I remember mm-hmm. liking that movie. Uh, my friend Jeff Richardson could probably speak more to it. He and his wife are disaster film enthusiasts. Uh, he told yeah. me they watched the original Twister like about every five years. So that's uh, the kind of thing they're into. So I'm going to have to ask it, him about just Poseidon Adventure. List, so. Nice. Yeah. Uh, we got to get Jeff back on because I want to talk to him about Earthquake if he's so hard up for disaster movies because that's one that I can't imagine anyone liking. All right, well, I, I saw him yesterday and I told him uh, to look at the list again and we'll have him back on. So we we'll should be hopefully soon. A couple other honorable mentions. I've seen uh, the first three of the Lone Wolf and Cub movies. So I have River Sticks and Sword of Vengeance in my honorable mentions for this year. And then my other honorable mention for this year is the Scorsese film uh, Boxcar Bertha, which is good, not great. Uh, my number five then is Lone Wolf and Cub uh, Baby Cart to Hades. My number Number four, What's Up, Doc? Number three is Solaris. Number two, Deliverance. Number one, I'm so boring. The Godfather. <laughs> I was going to say, those are five great movies. What's I know, yeah. That's a pretty good list. It's a pretty good list. It's just that, all, that, that's like, a good we've already talked five. about all of them. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, fair enough. What are you going to do? Pretty good um, best picture lineup there. This mm. is like such a hardcore, great time for movies. You're not, it's, it it's real tough to have a quote unquote dumb list. Yeah. Around <laughs> yeah. This I haven't seen, I haven't seen that Boonwell movie or even heard of it. What, what's it called again? Uh, the Discreet Charm of the Bourgeoisie. What's that about? So it is as if you can describe a Boonwell film. Right? We'll give it but, a um, it, it is like, uh, it's very similar to The Extinguishing Angel in that it's like making fun of an upper class group who all get together for dinner, but somehow never eat. And so uh, things keep getting in the way. Yeah, definitely worth checking out. Awesome. Yeah, trip. Yeah. your list was, a, as you were going through that, I'm like, oh my gosh, I should have seen that. Oh my gosh, I want to see that. Oh yeah, I really want to see that. Like, it's lots a, a lot of lots of, lots that I really would like to have seen. I've, I'll also give a, a shout out to uh, Conquest of the Planet of the Apes was this year, which uh, almost made my list. I think one of the best Planet of the Apes movies. This is the one where the apes take over. Oh, the apes take over. So it's, yeah, and very much echoes like the riots of the 60s. Where the, cool. Like the USC campus or somewhere like mm. that. So, have you so, seen A New Leaf? Oh, yes. I've seen all of Elaine May's stuff. So I love uh, all, all five of those movies. All, yeah, the four <laughs> things she directed. And then, yeah. Uh, no, huge, huge fan. I think A, a New Leaf is maybe her best film. But, yeah, uh, that movie's awesome. Ha- Heartbreak Kid is like impossible to find, too. That's the problem with it. Because it's owned by Coca-Cola or something really weird like that. And so it's hard to find a legal copy of it. Um, that's the funny thing about some of these old movies. Like there's this old, this 80s. It also, um, Charles Grodin, there's this movie from the 80s. Actually, if you want to combine A New Leaf, and I, I, I don't recommend seeing this movie. I'm going to start by that. But <laughs> combining A New Leaf and Heartbreak Kid, Charles Grodin and Walter Matthau starred oh. in a movie in the 80s called Movers and Shakers. It's hot garbage. It's so boring. Mm-hmm. But it's an interesting artifact. You, it doesn't exist. It, it basically doesn't exist. Yeah. I also, I, I mentioned Aguirre the Wrath of God, which is the Herzog movie about the conquistadors and like nature will kill you. There's something going on in 1972. As I was looking at all the movies, a really weird triple feature of Deliverance, Aguirre, and this is also the year of Wes Craven's Last House on the Left, which of course is also like a go out into the woods and you are sexually assaulted and have to get revenge movie. Something about uh, nature and people in this year is is terrorizing everyone. I think people just saw straw dogs and were like, I can do that. <laughs> I can do that. Yeah. 